Okay, cool guys. So yeah, I'm Darren Smith. Um, last year in September, I was fortunate enough to be chosen as one of four South African companies to go to Canada to Rice and Digital Media Zone, which is, um, if you don't know about it, it's Canada's number one university business incubator and number five in the world, right? So it was, it was pretty daunting, but I must say I was definitely excited to finally see my entrepreneurial efforts pay off and and show their dividends, right? So. Along with this would be four months incubation in this incubator, along with the stipend to obviously keep me alive and then access to their whole network and, and to see what they do and how they operate, to see what we can bring back and improve the launch lab. Um, because there's also another digital media zone opening in Gauteng, um, which is super exciting. So they kind of wanted to foster a relationship between South Africans and, and Canada, which I think we managed to do quite well. Um, the Digital Media Zone's been around for five years. I actually got there to witness the, the fifth year or, or birthday party, which was really, really, really cool. So I got my shirt there, giving them out. Um, so in those five years, they've managed to incubate 180 companies or more than 180 companies now, uh, create over 1,800 jobs and raise over $80 million in venture capital through all the companies that have been there, right? So I think that's a pretty impressive feat. Um, but anyway, uh, I'll get to a little bit more in depth on the digital media zone experience um, now, or in a bit. So when I first arrived in Canada, my impressions were, it's cold, very, very cold. Like, we don't understand what cold is, right? To me, cold is I've got my wife beater on, I've went to Clifton, it's 8 o'clock, and now I'm chilly, I need to go throw on a shirt before I go to Tiger, right? No, there it's cold. Like, cold, you close your eyes and your tears freeze, your eyelashes shut, cold. Never go there, terrible. Go there in summer, apparently it's good, though. Um, so, when I arrived at my hotel, it was pretty cool. It was, like, in downtown Toronto. Um, and... Obviously, I unpacked my bags. One of the other South Africans that I knew was there. And so I messaged him to obviously go out for one beer, right? Stally's guys. Um, so he took me out, and the place that we were going to was pretty much the Times Square of Canada. Super, super cool. Actually, little known fact, I don't know if it's little known, but at least for me it was, um, they shoot a lot of movies here instead of in New York, in Times Square, because it's a lot cheaper and easier to close down the roads. I actually got to see the new Batman movie being filmed, which was pretty cool, um, and they were negative with me because I walked in front of a lot of the shots because I wanted to be in Batman, obviously, like childhood dream, right? Um, so anyway, my friend takes me to this building. It's 12 stories big, and I didn't know at the time, but that's where the digital media zone is. And so we ended up just having a BL5 and enjoying the night. And next day, obviously, I need to go to the same building. So I get there, and the digital media zone takes up six of these 12 stories, right? So, that's, so it's a pretty big incubator when you think about it. So this is the kind of layout. Every, all the companies have their own desks. There's these little bubbles at the top to signify or what companies are sitting there. It's really a nice open space. It's not like the launch lab with the... It's more like hot desks everywhere. It's not like any offices. The only offices are meeting rooms where you can book um, time to meet, which is... It's nice in its own way because it really creates bonds between the entrepreneurs, I felt, and I think that was one of the most valuable experiences I had. So during my intake meeting, they kind of showed me the, the six floors that they have, introduced me to some of the companies. Most importantly, obviously, show me how the coffee machine works. Um, and then they get down to business. So they ask me what my goals are, uh, what companies I'd like to meet with them when I'm in Canada, all of that kind of stuff. And this was kind of a, a surprise to me because it was like, wow, thrown in the deep end immediately. But I didn't really think much of it. I, I knew what the answers were, so I gave it to them. And I just thought, okay, they were interested. They're just being polite and making conversation. But I'd soon come to realize that at the DMZ, they do a lot more than just that. There's a lot of staff there, right? So I think the, the digital media zone's creation alone has uh, employed 200 people at Ryerson, um, as in staff that keep it running, which is a lot to think about, right? So with all these staff, they've obviously got a lot of connections. Um, they organize a lot of tours that go through the space. So for example, if I'm a fintech company and a bank comes through, they'll have me pitch. So they really make an effort to A, promote themselves by get, showing them the top of the top startup or showing that they host the top startups to these big companies, but also they give the, the, uh, the startups a chance to liaise with these companies, which I really think is, is extremely valuable because I mean, where else are you gonna to speak to the CEO of like Standard Bank or something if you're a fintech company? So that's really great. Um, Another thing that they do really well is they, they foster a really good 
entrepreneurial ecosystem. So ecosystem is really three things, right? It's the staff that support it, the entrepreneurs within it, and then the community that they create. So the staff, as I said, were extremely supportive and helpful. They'd always be there if you needed anything, like I'm talking, if I needed a place where cheap rent is in a not dodgy area, they could advise me. Uh, if I needed to know where cheap groceries are, because your food is expensive there. Like a head of lettuce is 50 rand and a box of cookies is 10 rand. That's like oh, nobody, my parents are like, left with one son, came back with two, grab my fat rolls, make jokes, right? So um, they really were helpful. So there's a plus on that side. They're really in, interested in seeing their entrepreneurs succeed, which is, is amazing. So they always make plans and they always liaise with you about your goals. They kind of know what's going on with every company at every stage and what the companies have been through. So for example, if I've gone through a, a problem, let's say selling to enterprises, selling software as a service to an enterprise, they'll be like, I don't know exactly what that entails, but I know we've got company XYZ on the third floor that's done this. Let me quickly go and introduce them. They'll take you down and they'll really make a meaningful connection and just say, this is who this guy is. This is what he's struggling with. I know you've had this kind of problem as well. Can you talk? And the entrepreneurs, they are really super helpful, right? So that's the second part. The entrepreneurs are, help each other out a lot. They'll really go through the extra effort to to set up meetings for you. If you need to speak with a venture capitalist of a certain firm, they can get you introduced if they've been through that firm or if they know anyone. They can really give you tips of, of, of it because Canada's startup ecosystem is very, very densely populated. Let's just say it like that, right? Um, and then the last thing about the entrepreneurial ecosystem at the DMZ is the community, right? So the entrepreneurs organize a lot of things such as peer-to-peer uh, -peer sessions where let's say for example, um, I've discovered some new technology that's really nice, let's say for AngularJS, that makes your front end web development really cool. And I think that some startups could benefit and I've, I've kind of went through the effort to teach myself what, it, what um, it is and what it does and where it's applicable. They'll just have like an info session, like, hey guys, anyone that wants this info on this, come, I'm gonna do something at like this. So there's really like a lot of initiative to put back into the community, even though it's not asked of them. Um, there's a lot of networking sessions and socializing that the staff organize. So for example, Mondays has some cool event like beer and Lego, beer and old school movies. Um, it normally involves drinking, right? Because they know entrepreneurs will do anything for a free beer and, so and socializing. Um, so they do that and then Friday they do scotch nights, they do pub nights once a week or once a month and they do like uh, lunches once a month as well. So they really try to foster relationships within the community and that's really valuable because now I know a, a whole ton of people which are obviously the best of the best because they've been at one of the best incubators. Um, it's not just uh, my time there was working on my own business, it was also working on myself and my network connections which I found great and I think that's where a lot of the value comes in, right? Um, the next thing, we can say all this, that they're doing all these great things, but it's not solely that like the digital media zone is, is absolutely pristine with everything that it does. There's also a lot of support with the Canadian government and, and um, the way it works. So I did a little bit of research on why the entrepreneurial scene in Canada has taken off so much recently. And what I came to realize is... Um, a lot of, oh, traditionally, a lot of Canada's money wasn't spent on innovation. It was spent on um, ways to take out natural resources from the ground. They realized that in an increasing te or technologically dependent society that they need to invest more into uh, innovation and, and technological investment in their country. So along with this came a lot of legislation changes recently. Most of those involved the startup community. So there's tons of grants if you're a Canadian starting a company. Like you can just get, I think, up to $5 million, if, depending on your sector and what you need to do, um, for just a grant. Like that's to pay salaries or whatnot. Then you can also get tax credits for your research and development. So if you want to do something super cool, let's say f uh, build a shirt that uh, measures your heart rate and your respiration and all of that. Like that's not just something that you can be like, okay, I'm going to go do this now, guys. It's not like a Twitter that you can just code out. You have to go put in a lot of R&D. Um, and the government realizes this and they reimburse you. They also reimburse um, any students that you have working at universities. Um, their, their university fees as well as their salary working on research that's directly relatable to your company. They also have a lot of initiatives to get people into the country 
either expats or foreigners that are interested in working in in um, in, in, in entrepreneurial and startup environments. So for example, they have startup visas, which is pretty much like a fast track to citizenship. You either get uh, endorsed by uh, one of the few business incubators that can do it, or you, or you get um, uh, investment from one of the few VC companies that can do it. But basically that allows you to get a citizenship in about a year. So it's very cool. They try to bring, they try to poach our talent effectively, but they also try to bring expats back by subsidizing their salaries, giving them um, good living benefits and and healthcare and all of that. Um, they also subsidize salaries for recent graduates because Canada has a difficult to enter job market it seems without a lot of experience and the government's realized this but they also realized with all these new startup initiatives they have they've created a lot more jobs uh, that need to be filled so that if you hiring a Canadian citizen that's straight out of university they'll pretty much pay a salary for the first two years so there's a lot of things like that that go on behind the scenes that kind of make you think oh um, they the reason that they're this good is because there's a lot of infrastructure backing it. And I really think that we can get to that point as well. We've got a lot of new initiatives like with Silicon Cape and um, the, the recent boom with incubators. Yeah, because I remember like three years ago, there wasn't even a launch level four years ago. Um, another thing that this drives is all these kind of entrepreneurial um, uh, eco uh, entrepreneurial helpers, if you would, from the government is that the, the culture there is really big. So there's always like a meetup. So for example, um, on Monday nights, there'll be people that meet up and talk about hardware and the, the kind of what new hardware can be used in an entrepreneurial environment. What like, there's this new chip. What can we use it for as Internet of Things? Thing. There's book clubs revolved around entrepreneurial books like the Lean Startup and whatnot. So there's kind of always a support group for you to find if you're struggling with a problem and just a way to make friends right so it's, it's especially nice if you're coming from a different country and you don't know what's been going on or where the cool places are you can find find a group of friends that are into the same things as you the problem with this is the life is very fast paced right because you've got so many people trying to quickly get their foot in the door in this entrepreneurial ecosystem everyone is on the ball 24 seven. I mean, you're expected if I wanna meet with you to do business, it's like today or tomorrow. And other than that, I'm not interested. If, if I email you now, it's 2 a.m., I expect an email, and if I don't have an email uh, back immediately, if I don't have that email back immediately, I'll email you like 2.30, 3, 3.34. It's kind of ridiculous in a way, but I can see why uh, the life is so fast paced, because I mean, there's nothing else to do except go outside and be cold. <laughs> So the fast paced life has its ups and downsides. I kind of liked it for the four months, but coming back to South Africa, it's been nice to take a little bit of a chill pull. Uh, the problem with this is it also breeds people that are really similar because um, there's such high competition. People kind of focus on the best practices in, in entrepreneurship, if you would. So for example, the lean startup is super popular there, right? It's also popular here, but like there, it's kind of like every entrepreneur has a carved in with a knife into their forearm, the principles, right? Build, measure, learn. And it's, it's good in its own way that it teaches people to work within a framework and think critically, but I don't think it's optimal for everyone to be like that because you miss out on a lot of things such as individual creativity. How are we ever supposed to find better ways to do things if everyone's indoctrinated into the same way of thinking? It doesn't really make sense. We need to play to our strengths and um, think about uh, alternative ways to do things that other people might not. How are we supposed to grow our knowledge base if we don't do this? So that's something that was kind of strange to me. Um, comparing the South African entrepreneurs to the Canadian ones, I must say we do compare quite well, especially the guys from Joburg. I was super impressed by how much they got done in, in how little time. I think my friend signed like a $200 million deal when he was there. I was quite jealous, right? Um, so I also think that we, we will see uh, a, a much faster growth rate than, that, than, than can Canada has seen because we already have people that are kind of battling to be entrepreneurs like we're all all here already right so they, they're kind of striving and pushing to be an entrepreneur but there isn't really much uh, support infrastructure to help them whereas Canada first had to get the support infrastructure for the the entrepreneurial scene to grow so I'm I'm 
overall generally positive about how we're heading and the, dire or the direction that we're heading in. Um, uh, so if you are interested in doing something like this, what would my advice to you be, right? Obviously, it would just be be prepared. Um, the experience was absolutely great. I can say it's been life-changing and one of the best things that I've done uh, ever. Yeah, definitely. Um, but there were some things, if I knew now, I'd do a little bit different. Um, I think the main thing is, if you're going to North America, it's nice to learn and it's great to see the, the culture and, and how things are done. It really, um, I think, makes you a little bit more open-minded and free-thinking. But the problem is, if you're not looking to expand into that market or something, is it really worth those four to six months? I was there for, yeah, for six months, right? So um, is it really worth going? Uh, so these are questions that you need to ask. If you've identified that it is, you're trying to uh, branch out in the mar these markets or at least uh, make partnerships with like content providers, for example, um, then be very focused on, I know all the players in the sector, I need to reach them, these are their connections, these are like these are companies they've invested or companies they've liaised with in the future. Really have like a solid game plan when you're going in. Don't just go there and think, okay, I'm gonna see what happens. Um, so preparation is key and also bringing a positive attitude. I mean, we had one South African guy that went with us and after like a month, he just went home. Um, because he wasn't, he wasn't loving it. And, and I think that was really wasted because he had a great product. Um, he was getting interest, but he, he just wasn't, he just wasn't like, enjoying himself, so he left. And I think it's, that's a, a, a general thing about life, right? You need to have the right outlook um, on it to, to A, be successful, and B, more importantly, be happy, right? Um, and then the last thing is kind of, if you do want to get into this, just listen, there's a ton of opportunities open. So I know on Tuesday, uh, Y Combinator released something where they're starting a Y Combinator fellowship. So you can go and look for, uh, they're looking for people from all over the world. They can do it remotely. They take no equity. They take 12, they give you $12,000 to kind of um, work on your idea for those four months. And then they fly you to, to uh, Mountain View in San Fran or in, in, uh, in California to pitch to them at the like when the program's finished. So there's a lot of these programs. I know there's Highway One. There's tons of these that we just need to be open to um, and, and looking for. So there's, um, there's also a huge trend overseas to bring in, over, uh, bring in talent, talent from other nations. It's like, I know uh, multidisciplinary teams was like the buzzword a few years ago, and now it's um, diversified teams, which basically just means people from different continents or, or different countries working together. So that's my short little experience on, or short little pitch on, on the DMZ and what I did there, what I think about it, and how we compare. Um, now I'd like to